Hi. Welcome, welcome. It's a hot night at Poetry Church. Um, we're so honored and excited to have this pair of pairs tonight. Thank you for being with us. Um, I'm Kyle Dekuyan. I'm the executive director here at the Poetry Project. I'm very excited to be celebrating spectral evidence and phantom pain wings. Um, and I want to thank my colleague, Laura Henriksen, our program director who organized this beautiful event. Unfortunately, can't be here tonight. Some reminders before we begin. Restrooms are located upstairs and then also on the first floor following a performance that Dance Space has this evening. Um, and we'll be back on next week for an evening with Jonathan Gonzalez and Alexander Wahelia, where we'll have copies of Wahelia's brand new, not fully released yet book, Fenin, R&B Music and the Materiality of Black Femme Voices and Technology, not to be missed. And now I'm delighted to turn it over to the wonderful E. Tracy Grinnell to introduce Elizabeth Willis and Nancy Bowen. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, everyone at the um, Poetry Project um, for such thoughtful uh, curation tonight and in general. Um, it's really, it's an honor to be here with Kim Haisun and Don Mi Choi. Um, and I'm really happy to introduce Elizabeth Willis and Nancy Bowen and to launch their project, Spectral Evidence, The Witch Book, which is a trade edition that we're, is available for pre-order tonight, and The Witch Box, which is a limited artist edition. And we have a couple over there you can look at, and if you're feeling really fancy, you can order one as well. Um, really beautiful uh, elements in that box. Um, Nancy Bowen is a mixed media artist knowing for her, known for her eclectic mixtures of imagery and materials in both two and three dimensions. Bowen has numerous solo exhibitions throughout the United States and Europe. She has won awards from Anonymous Was a Woman, the National Endowment for the Arts, the New York Foundation for the Arts, the McDowell Colony, Yaddo, and just this week returned from a fellowship at the Dora Mar House in France. She is currently a professor of sculpture at Purchase College, SUNY. She maintains a studio in the Brooklyn Navy Yard. Elizabeth Willis's most recent book, Alive, New and Selected Poems, New York Review of Books 2015, was a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize. Her other books of poetry include Address, uh, Wesleyan 2011, recipient of the Penn New England L.L. Winship Prize for Poetry, Meteoric Flowers, Wesleyan 2006, Turner-esque, Burning Deck 2003, The Human Abstract, Penguin 1995, a National Poetry Series selection, and Second Law, Avenue B, 1993. From 2002 to 2015, she taught at Wesleyan University, where she served as Shapiro Silverberg Professor of Creative Writing. Since 2015, she has been on the permanent faculty at the Iowa Writers' Workshop. I'm going to start uh, by way of introduction with a few statements. In August 2022, Massachusetts lawmakers formally exonerated Elizabeth Johnson, Jr., who was convicted of witchcraft in 1693 and sentenced to death at the height of the Salem witch trials. Johnson is believed to be the last accused Salem witch to have her conviction set aside by legislators. It has recently come to our ears that many persons of both sexes, heedless of their own salvation and forsaking the Catholic faith, give themselves over to devils, male and female, and by their incantations, charms, and conjurings, and by other abominable superstitions and sortileges, offenses, crimes, and misdeeds, ruin and cause to perish the offspring of women, the foal of animals, the products of the earth, the grapes of vines, the fruits of trees, as well as men and 
and women, cattle and flocks and herds and animals of every kind, vineyards also and orchards, meadows, pastures, harvest, grains, and other fruits of the earth, that they afflict and torture with dire pains and anguish, both internal and external, these men, women, cattle, flocks, herds, and animals, and hinder men from begetting and women from conceiving and prevent all, con all consummation of marriage. Pope Innocent VIII, Papal Bull, December 5th, 1484. Whereas the courts in the early colonies of Connecticut and New Haven indicted at least 34 women and men for the alleged crime of witchcraft and convicted 12 of them, executing 11, and it is now accepted by the historical profession and society as a whole that all the accused were innocent of such charges and whereas legal procedures differed at the time and many practices of the court would no longer meet modern standards of proof so that the miscarriage of justice was facilitated by such procedures and whereas the status of women was radically different than it is today and misogyny played a large part in the trials and in deni denying defendants their rights and dignity Whereas community strife and panic combined with overwhelming fear and superstition led to these accusations of alleged witchcraft and the subsequent suffering of those accused, now, therefore, be it resolved that all of the formally convicted and executed are exonerated of all alleged crimes relating to the charges of witchcraft. Connecticut House Joint Resolution Number 34, January 2023. Faggot reminds us that homosexuals were at times the kindling for the stakes upon which witches were burned, while the Italian finocchio, fennel, refers to the practice of scattering these aromatic vegetables on the stakes in order to mask the stench of burning flesh. Caliban and the Witch, Silvia Federici. There are seven methods by which witches infect the venereal act and the conception of the womb, first by inclining the minds of men to inordinate passion, second by obstructing their generative force, third by removing the member accommodated to that act, fourth by changing men into beasts by their magic art, fifth by destroying the generative force in women, sixth by procuring abortion, seventh by offering children to the devil from Malleus Maleficarum, or The Hammer of Witches, Heinrich Kramer, 1486. Finally, the Lord rebuke you, Satan, <laughs> and all of your demons and all of your imps who come parade before us. That's right, I called you demons and imps who come and parade before us and pretend you are part of this world. We have people that live among us today on planet Earth that are happy to display themselves as if they were mutants from another planet. This is the planet Earth where God created men, male, and women, female. Representative Webster Barnaby, April 10th, 2023. Spectral evidence, the witch book is the result of a meeting between Elizabeth Willis, descendant of one or two of the convicted and executed witches of the Salem Witch Trials, and Nancy Bowen, descendant of Samuel Sewell, a prominent judge in the trials. Um, it's my pleasure to welcome Nancy and Elizabeth. And I'm, I think we'll start before reading and sort of presentation of the book with Liz and Nancy talking about the kind of genesis of their, their two initially separate projects that, that then came together to create the iteration of spectral evidence we have now, so. Yeah. Uh, Do right. you want to start? I will start. <laughs> um, <clears throat> first of all, I just want to say thank you all for being here. It's really nice to see such a, a robust audience. Um, Can I say something too now? <clears throat> and um, it is really an honor to be here at the Poetry Project, um, which has been a part of my poetic education since you know I started coming to New York City in the 1980s. Um, it's also really an honor to be sharing the evening with two poets who I admire so much as Don Mi Choi and Kim Hyo Soon. So thank you. Um, and also amazing to be working with Litmus Press and with Nancy 
people who have such an acute sense of composition and kind of combinatory magic. So that I just wanted to get out of the way first. Thank you. Okay. Um, so the beginnings of this project um, started in my studio around 2015, 2016. And I had grown up knowing that I had a witch judge as an ancestor. And as a good feminist, I always was never proud of that. But something possessed me to do some more research into Samuel Sewell around that time. And I started off by going to the Witch Museum in Salem, which is a very fun place to go. Um, but it had a terrific bookstore. And in the bookstore, I saw a book that was called, well, first of all, I saw about 10 books on Samuel Sewell, who I only knew as my ancestor. I didn't realize he was book worthy or anything. But one of those books was called Samuel Sewell's Apology, The Making of the American Moral Conscience. And I was really curious about what that meant. So I bought the book and I bought a couple of other books. And to make a really long story short, um, he was one of the main witch judges, but he became convinced too late, they were dead, but he became <laughs> convinced that they had made a really big mistake and that the law they were using, the spectral evidence, which we took as the name of our book, was not in fact law. And um, he tried to get the other judges to, you have to remember they're all religious fanatics at that time, they're all members of the same church. He tried to get them to all stand up in church and say they had made a mistake, they had sinned, and of course, um, nobody would do it with him. And so he did get up in church, and he said he had sinned, and that he was going to spend the rest of his life atoning for those sins. He put on a hair shirt. He wrote the first abolitionist treatise that was published in the colonies. He educated several Native boys, which basically meant converting them to Christianity. But, you know, given the mores of the time, he was making all these attempts at... Um, atonement. And I was really interested in that as um, a premise. And I imagine, also you have to remember that this was 2016 and we had just lost the promise of Hillary. We had Trump. There were all kinds of legislative men telling fake news and lies and it there were just tremendous echoes with what had gone on in colonial America and I was really interested in those parallels so I imagined him meeting up with the 20 witches who were killed and I ended up making all of them and so what you're seeing here is him at one end weighed down with I made about 20 gallows. He, I gave him a hair shirt. I hung the gallows off the hair shirt. So he was sort of wearing his guilt and facing his accusers. And while I was working on this, um, Susan B. and Charles Bernstein, who I know a lot of you know, came to my studio and they said to me, you have to meet our friend Elizabeth Willis here. So, <laughs> and they said that she had written a bunch of poems um, on the subject of witches and that she was a descendant of the witches. So I contacted her and that was sort of how this all began. And I was really taken with her poem, The Witch. Um, and I asked her if I could take each line and illustrate it in some sense. And I either did drawings, collages, or a combination of the both for um, each of them. And then that was the beginning of our collaboration. Mm -hmm. And I guess you can talk about sure. how you came to your mm -hmm. poem. Yeah. And then we'll talk about what happened next. OK. With bated breath. <laughs> um, so. Well, to just pick up where you left off, um, when I 
when Nancy approached me, it sort of sounded like it was um, like a colonial episode of a Jerry Springer <laughs> show <laughs> sort of thing. Um, and so um, we, we were conscious of not wanting to go in that direction. Um, <laughs> And, you know, I, th I think through this whole project have been, you know, um, very much aware of the fact that even knowing uh, your descendants in to that extent, knowing your ancestry to that extent is also a, a, a privilege. And that, you know, we didn't want to either of us, I mean, I think especially me <laughs> maybe because as a representative of the witch side. Um, <laughs> to act as if like I was carrying that wrong in, in some way. But um, I had been interested in which is going quite a ways back um, and actually beginning with research into the Hollywood blacklist in, around 2000. And of course that coincided with a different presidential disaster. And so um, I've been fascinated by moments when state and church power converge, when different forms of state power converge, when state power is deployed through other structures such as the family. Um, and that's been a research interest of mine um, and a kind of imaginative uh, interest of mine for a really long time. What are the alternatives to these disciplinary and often carceral um, structures? So that the thinking about the poem began around 2000 and then when you know when a couple of years later i moved to massachusetts and um a relative told me that i was related to these two witches martha carrier and mary bradbury and asked if i would take pictures at the cemetery in andover and i just you know i again was sort of fascinated by well what does it take historically to be um, cast out and what are those thresholds in different um, times. And I think as a poet, I've just always been interested in pattern recognition, like what, is, what, are, what are the components that, um, that cause liberation? What are the components um, that cause um, imaginative collapse? Um, anyway, so that, that's kind of where the poem started. Then when Nancy approached me, um, I went to see the installation uh, in Salem, which was very similar to this, and you can see the, um, the images along the wall. And it was really interesting to see this poem, which, you know, in book form just is like a four-page poem. Um, and it felt like I was walking around in an exploded book. And then when she said she, was, she thought it might be interesting to pull it together as a book, it sort of made sense to me. Also, especially because the, um, the arguments against witches um, have, I mean, f since the 15th century, also been very much grounded in imagery so that they are accessible to those who cannot read. So um, just thinking about the ways that iconography um, serves various purposes was of interest to me in this project. I don't know, is that? Oh, yeah, should we read the poem? Was that, yes. is that what you were thinking? Okay. Go right. for it. Okay, well, so Tracy, you're gonna do the, I'll, yeah. okay. So, so we'll, um, oops, is this one on? I know, it depends on where the projection goes up. There, okay, okay. So I'll just read you the poem um, somewhat slowly and, and we'll show you some of the images that are in the book and then we'll um, sort of wind up uh, other ways. You would think I would be able to find this really easily. There it is, okay. The Witch. A witch can charm milk from an axe handle. A witch bewitches a man's shoe. A witch sleeps naked. Witch ointment on the back will allow you to fly through the air. A witch carries the four of clubs in her sleeve. 
a witch may be sickened at the scent of roasting meat, a witch will neither sink nor swim. When crushed, a witch's bones will make a fine glue. A witch will pretend not to be looking at her own image in a window. A witch will gaze wistfully at the glitter of a clear night. A witch may take the form of a cat in order to sneak into a good man's chamber. A witch's breasts will be pointed rather than round, as discovered in the trials of the 1950s. A powerful witch may cause a storm at sea. With a glance, she will make rancid the fresh butter of her righteous neighbor. Even our fastest dogs cannot catch a witch hare. A witch has been known to cry out while her husband places inside her the image of a child. A witch may be burned for tying knots in a marriage bed. A witch may produce no child for years at a time. A witch may speak a foreign language to no one in particular. She may appear to frown when she believes she is smiling. If her husband dies unexpectedly, she may refuse to marry his brother. A witch has been known to weep at the sight of her own child. She may appear to be acting in a silent film whose placards are missing. In Hollywood, the sky is made of tin. A witch makes her world of air, then fire, then the planets of cardboard, then ink, then a compass. A witch desires to walk rather than be carried or pushed in a cart. When walking, a witch will turn suddenly and pretend to look at something very small. The happiness of an entire house may be ruined by witch hair touching a metal cross. The devil does not speak to a witch. He only moves his tongue. An executioner may find the body of a witch insensitive to an iron spike. An unrepentant witch may be converted with a little lead in the eye. Enchanting witch powder may be hidden in a girl's hair. When a witch is hungry, she can make a soup by stirring water with her hand. I have heard of a poor woman changing herself into a pigeon. At times, a witch will seem to struggle against an unknown force stronger than herself. She will know things she has not seen with her eyes. She will have opinions about distant cities. A witch may cry out sharply at the sight of a known criminal dying of thirst. She finds it difficult to overcome the sadness of the last war. A nightmare is witch work. The witch elm is sometimes referred to as all heart, as in she was thrown into a common chest of witch elm. When a witch desires something that is not hers, she will slip it into her glove. An overwhelming power compels her to take something from a rich man's shelf. I have personally known a nervous young woman who often walked in her sleep. Isn't there something witch-like? about a sleepwalker who wanders through the house with matches. The skin of a real witch makes a delicate binding for a book of common prayer. When all the witches in your town have been set on fire, their smoke will fill your mouth. It will teach you new words. It will tell you what you've done.
I want to let you both talk and not be at the podium, but um, maybe just as part of a segue into another area of um, discussing the project. Um, in our conversation, which is an afterword um, in a pamphlet in the art, the which box and uh, appendix in the trade edition. Um, we kept coming against, up against the ways in which the topic of persecution, surveillance, control, punishment reverberates, resonates, radiates, I think is a word you used, Liz, um, into so many sort of contemporary areas, situations, circumstances. And um, I'm thinking of a range of things, anti-trans legislation, controversy around drag queens reading to kids, book banning, um, removing history, accurate history from curricula. Um, so I'm just, I wanted to sort of segue and have you both sort of talk about um, the ways in which the project as it developed, be, sort of developed this contemporary urgency it felt um, and you've you've uh, alluded to it in terms of the timing of the projects and the sort of yeah. context in which you were writing. Um, yeah. so. Well, and part of what was interesting to me when I did some research into the um, historical moment of the Salem trials was that um, there were cases in which essentially what the person accused was guilty of was poverty or mumbling. Uh, or various forms of dissent, or you know, just even having a difference of opinion from, say, their local preacher, um, with having a child out of wedlock. Um, so, I mean, that gives you a sense of like, yeah, it wasn't just all about um, you know girls writhing on the ground or anything like that. There were all kinds of. Uh, sort of invisible power structures at work. Um, so I don't know. That's I th and that obviously translates across <laughs> across time. Yeah, but I mean, any the state is always looking for a way. I mean, not just the state is looking for ways to control, but I mean, the state is always looking for ways to control because its job is you know, management, people management. And so the more homogenous, the more predictable um, people's behavior is, um, the easier their work is, right? So anyway. Yeah, and I think that um, thinking about the statements that you read earlier, Tracy, I mean, the dates on some of those were 2023 and 2022. and. So I think these issues are things that we are still dealing with. And unfortunately, it looks like we're going to be continuing to deal with them in the future. Yeah. Um, can I change the subject a little? Yeah. OK. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wanted to just talk a little bit about um, our collaboration. Um, and one of the things that I found really interesting being an artist working in my studio by myself and then all of a sudden doing this thing with not just Liz but with the um, Litmus and you guys was how everybody ended up bringing ideas to the table and the book over there has aspects that Liz came up with the ideas, that you came up with the ideas, Rachel came up with the ideas, and I, I really liked the way it grew mm -hmm. as a project and took on, became something way different, not way different than I imagined, but sort of bigger and better than I imagined. Yeah. I mean, I think at some point it felt like it really became an opportunity for another kind of practice, like that the, that the making of a poem is one piece of the practice. And actually having, um, having this group of women with whom you know, we could just freely share ideas was amazing. It was also the case that Rachel Wilson, the amazing Rachel Wilson, um, and I were in a reading group at the same time and reading Cedric J. Robinson's Black Marxism and uh, and in like completely separate from this and at the same time I was reading a book that Nancy had recommended by Sylvia Federici 
um, Caliban and the Witch, and you would think these are completely, you know, non-overlapping intellectual projects, but they are very deeply rooted in the histories of violence within Europe, and you know, as um, as like origin points for racism in America and the slave trade. So I really highly recommend those books if you're interested in um, exploring some of these ideas further. So that's one thing. What else? <laughs> Should we go to your next poem? Oh, yeah. Well, so um, in my long sojourn with, um, you know, just sort of being interested in forms of resistance. And another book that was really important to me was um, Roxanne Dunbar Ortiz's um, Indigenous People's History of the United States and also a book called um, The Uses of a Whirlwind that she ed co-edits with somebody else. And what's especially interesting about the Uses of a Whirlwind book is the ways that it looks at moments in history, such as the Green Corn Rebellion in 1917, when there were multiracial coalitions um, joining together for political um, resistance. And so as somebody whose family settled in the West, I've been really interested in um, you know, kind of what are the what are the decision points at which things went so badly wrong? Like, what where were the moments of possibility where this seemingly um, irreversible set of reactions um, could have gone differently? And it, it's it's part of the thinking about just like we all live within climate change, and you know, trying to figure out like what's recompense for in, incommensurable harm, and how do we how do we think about um, how to be differently in the world, how do we use our attention and our consciousness um, toward something other than repeating the patterns of the past. So, um, so the, the poem, The Witch, initially I thought was part of this longer uh, book project that, um, that thankfully uh, New Directions is gonna be publishing next year that has, um, elements that, you know, I've touched on here, but, you know, has a lot to do with family structures and religious structures and trying to rethink um, history in various ways. So I thought maybe what I would do is just read a very short poem from that piece as a, as a way of closing down um, and hopefully opening up a little bit. Um, I'm assuming people know who Circe is, but, you know, um, Circe may be the first, you know, sort of mythological character who was um, considered a witch. And uh, anyway, she makes a, an appearance in this, um, in this project, so. And Tertullian, you know, is one of those church figures like Augustine who had really interestingly radical moments uh, in their kind of otherwise often problematic <laughs> statements. So anyway, Tertullian's famous statement was, I believe because it is absurd. So this is because it is absurd. Tertullian considered Circe the master of the first circus. Therefore the word bears or bends her name. Her villa was surrounded by wild creatures who in her presence wandered around like pets. She lived on an island made entirely of vowels. From offshore, it sounded more like a moan than a cry. Circe's clock spun on an axis of natural rather than military power. A concentrated gaze can dull the minds of would-be conquerors. Some say she tricked Odysseus into forgetting about his wife and dog, but it was he who chose to spend the year with her a few hours from his unraveling home. Seen from this distance, Circe resembles Penelope, whose hand she has taken to dwell with other artists, making worlds of their resistance in the fields between the humans and the gods. Nature has a material magic whereby everything that has come apart is recombined.
Thank you so much again to Elizabeth Willis and Nancy Bowen, and thank you to Litmus. Um, let's take a tight five break, <laughs> and then we'll come back, and I'm so excited to hear Kim Hae-soon and Don Miche.
going to resume. Welcome back. Thank you again to Elizabeth and Nancy for an amazing reading. And I'm very honored to be um, reading this introduction composed by my colleague Laura for Kim Hae-soon and Don Miche. I don't think I've ever comforted anyone with my writing. Kim Hae-soon observes in her new book, Phantom Pain Wings, beautifully translated by Don Mi Che. Grief is a borderless terrain of dislocation, a volatile and liminal process, and it's here where bird arises. It's here where bird makes a home. I went to the underworld to invent bird, Hae-soon writes, bird who is both message and messenger bird in high heels and mascara, bird with fingers and a pitiful face, bird human, woman animal, the mechanism that subjectifies the gaps. The gap where this book unfolds, this book which is not a book but a record of a sequence of disintegration and flight, is highly populous by girls, umbrellas, doorbells, nipples, poets, trees, sorrow, the wind. We are in the teeming field of doing where Kim writes from, where everything has and is a body that moves and suffers and blurs, where everything speaks or seems poised at the edge of speech. An animistic liveliness permeates the language where the dead are rebirthed even as for the living, death has already begun. In this between space of mourning, the speaking self cannot exist at a distance. It is augmented by everything it touches, becoming I plus bird plus music. Inseparable from this augmentation, however, is an emptying not so much transformed as vacated reaching impersonality of the subject. I take a step towards where I don't exist, Hesun explains. This confrontation with nothingness is not comforting. It's scary, explosive, ecstatic. Kim commands, bite the bullet and endure the void, the center of the vortex where the only name is death where a feather drops from the shadow of enormous wings. Please join me in welcoming Kim Hae-soon and Don Che to the Poetry Project. Thank you so much. Um, the slides um, you'll see, um, uh, it's the art of V.J. Lee, uh, who happens to be Kim Hae-sun's daughter. <laughs> going, going, go on. 새가 나를 오린다. 햇빛이 그림자를 오리듯. 오려낸 자리로 구멍이 들어온다. 내가 나간다. 새가 나를 오린다. 시간이 나를 오리듯. 오려낸 자리로 벌어진 입이 들어온다. 내가 그입 밖으로 나갔다가 기영하로 돌아온다. 다시 나간다. 내가 없는 곳으로 한 걸음. 내가 없는 곳으로 한 걸음. 새가 나를 오리지 않는다. 벽 뒤에서 내가 무한히 대기한다. Going, going, 
gone. Bird cuts me out like the way sunlight cuts out shadows. Hole enters the spot where I was cut out. I exit. Bird cuts me out like the way time cuts me. Gaping mouth enters the cutout. I exit through the open mouth, then return as a deformed child. I exit again. I take a step toward where I don't exist. I take a step toward where I don't exist. Bird doesn't cut me out. Behind the wall, I'm on standby forever. 날개 환상통. 하이힐을 신은 새한 마리 아스팔트 위를 울면서 간다. 마스카라는 녹아 흐르고 밤의 깃털은 무한대 무한대. 그들은 말했다. 에도는 우리 것. 너는 더러워서 안 돼. 늘 같은 꿈을 꿉니다. 얼굴은 사람이고 팔을 펼치면 새. 말 끊지 말라고 했잖아요. 늘 같은 꿈을 꿉니다. 뼛속엔 투명한 새의 행로. 선글라스 뒤에는 은쟁반 위에 까만 콩두 개. 지금은 식사 중이니 전화를 받을 수 없습니다. 나는 걸어가면서 먹습니다. 걸어가면서 머리를 올립니다. 걸어가면서 피를 쌉니다. 그 이름 새는 복부에 창이 박힌 저 새는 모래의 날개를 가졌나 바람에 쫓겨가는 저 새는 저 좁은 어깨 노수구의 새가 유리에 맺혔다 사라집니다. 사실은 겨드랑이가 푸드득거려 걷습니다. 커다란 날개가 부끄러워 걷습니다. 새든 집이 몸보다 작아서 걷습니다. 비가 오면 내 젖은 두 손이 무한대 무한대 죽으려고 몸을 숨기러 가던 저 새가 나를 돌아보던 순간 여기는 서울인데 여기는 숨을 곳이 없는데 제발 나를 떠밀어 주세요. 쓸쓸한 눈빛처럼 공중을 헤매는 새에게 안전은 보장할 수 없다고 들어오면 때리겠다고 제발 떠벌리지 마세요. 저 새는 땅에서 내동댕이 쳐져 공중에 있답니다. 사실 이 소리는 빗소리가 아닙니다. 내 하이힐이 아스팔트를 두드리는 소리입니다. 오늘 밤 나는 이 화장실 밖에는 숨을 곳이 없어요. 물이 나오는 곳, 수도꼭지에서 흐르는 물소리가 나를 위로해 주는 곳, 나는 여기서 애도합니다. 부들부들 떨리는 손으로 검은 날개를 들어 올리듯 마스카라로 눈썹을 들어 올리면 타일에 떨어지는 빗소리가 나를 떠밉니다. 내 실을 내어려 놓을 것 없는 이 밤에. Phantom pain wings. Bird in high heels walks on asphalt, crying. Mascara drips down. My night feathers are infinitely, infinitely large. Critics tell me, condolences are for us. You're too filthy for them. I keep dreaming the same dream. It has the face of a human, but is a bird when it stretches out its limbs. I told you not to cut me off. I keep dreaming the same dream. Inside my bone, bird's transparent pathway. Behind my sunglasses, two black beans on a silver platter. Can you read dreams with these two beans? I can't take any calls at the moment because I'm having a meal. I eat as I walk. I lift my head as I walk. I shit blood as I walk. Its name, bird. That bird with glass stuck to its abdomen. Bird is chased by wind. Maybe it has sand feathers. Homeless bird, its tiny shoulders. Bird sticks to glass then vanishes. To be honest, I walk because my armpits flutter. I walk because I'm ashamed of my huge wings. I walk because my birdhouse is smaller than me. When it rains, my soaked hands are infinitely, infinitely large. Bird was on its way to die, to hide. The second it turns around to look at me, it chirps. This is soul. There's no place for me to hide here. Please push me off the cliff. 
bird swirls in the air like a lonely gaze. Critics say, safety can't be guaranteed. We'll hit you when you come in. Bird replies, please stop talking about me. Bird is up in the air after being flung onto the ground. Honestly, this isn't the sound of rain. It's the sound of my high heels pounding the asphalt. Tonight, there's no place for me to hide except in this bathroom. I'm calmed by the sound of water streaming from the faucet. I mourn in here. My hand trembles as I curl up my eyelashes with mascara, as if lifting up my black wings. The sound of rain hitting the tiles pushes me off the deep end. Tonight, there's no place for me to put down my poem. Chalanesum he. Nimumeso nega sirus shimun sedri, ultung bultung manjajosum he. Nipiga se piro, sero cheo josum he. Ni palkorumi kungjung. ดีปิกาเซปิโรเซโรเชวจสมเฮดีปิกาเซปิโรเซโรเชวจสมเฮดีปิกาเซปิโรเซโรเชวจสมเฮดีปิกาเซปิโรเซโรเชวจสมเ
저 슬픔을 뭐라 할까? Free ghost. What comes out of my eyes besides my loving tears? What do my pupils taste like? Do souls taste like them? Can I say the light beaming out of my eyes is light? Say the light belongs to my body because it streams from me. Is the glitter in my eyes already a ghost? What can I say about the look in mommy's eyes when she opened the door? Mommy who cried for three months and ten days after daddy passed away. What about the light in my daughter's eyes when she saw my face in color for the first time after I'd been floating in dark water for 280 days? Do we see the world through the soul's heels? Do we dream standing up? What's that light beaming out of the eyes of my family as we say to each other, let's eat before the food gets cold and share the body of living things? What's that light reflecting from two sips of water spilled on the ground? The gaze of the stars hovering outside my window, what are they like? What do you call the sorrow that keeps on staring even after it's dead? Busa, Nalda. 매일 그 시간 아빠 네가 깨어난다 내 시간으로 말고 망자의 시간으로 그 시간 아빠 네가 내 흐느낌 속에서 속삭이듯 새 아빠가 한분 나타나셨으니 짧게 친 머리칼은 새벽처럼 서늘하고 앵두보다 작은 엉덩이는 눈물의 발원지를 찌르듯 아빠인가 하면 새이고 새인가 하면 눈발같이 밀가루같이 새하얗지만 내 손으로 휘저어지는 얼굴 그 새가 내 얼굴에 앉았다 날아가면 내 얼굴이 사라졌다 내 얼굴이 있던 자리엔 존재하는 듯 부재하는 은은한 부사의 울림만 남았다 성당에 모인 사람들이 죽은 일을 하나씩 켜들고 승, 성모 승천 대축일 찬송을 부른다 우리나라는 지금 광복절 천장에서 물이 새듯 차가운 새가 각자 하나씩 아빠 너는 손바닥만한 작은 외투 지금 막 태어난 아기에게 입힌 외투같이 작은 외투를 입고 죽음의 추위를 견디고 있는 조그맣게 줄어든 작은 인생같이 아빠 너의 선망이 시작하면 언제나 6.25가 다시 시작했다 아빠 너는 총을 들었던 전장으로 언제나 낮은 포복으로 이불이 침대 아래로 떨어지고 어느 편 참호의 아빠 너의 촛불이 악착같이 펄럭이는지 엄마는 간호장교로 호명되고 나는 의무병이 되어서 병사의 비명을 향해 돌진했다 엄마 나는 계속해서 물었다. 아빠 내가 누구야? 아빠 내가 누구야? 그러면 명사와 동사를 다 잊은 아빠가 이미 미리 이미 미리 그리고 다시 이미 미리 이미 부사만 외치다 말았다. 아빠 너를 아무데나 데리고 오는 작은 외투가 펄럭이자 주인을 잃고 무게도 잃은 풍경이 펄럭거리며 나를 따라왔다. 우리가 모두 죽은 다음 부사만 남은 그런 세상이 나를 감쌌다. 이미와 미리 사이에서. Um, Adverbs fly. This poem is part of a um, longer poem called Community of Parting. Adverbs fly. Daddy, you always wake up at that hour. Not in my time zone, but in the dead's time zone at that hour. Daddy, a new daddy showed up, like the way you whisper inside my crying. His close cropped hair was as wintry as the dawn, and his butt cheeks were smaller than cherries, poking the well of my tears. Is it daddy? No, bird. Is it bird? No, a face, like snow flurries, like white flower that I stir with my hand. My face vanishes after bird lands on it and takes off. Only the quiet echoes of adverbs or absence of adverbs remain in the, sp in the spot where my face was. I'm whitish, like life that disappears even before it has a name. 
My head becomes empty like the North Pole made of paper. I cover my eyes with my right arm and swoon on Verona Cathedral's cold floor. I thought it was that hour again. Daddy, your time of death is 11. Daddy, I had a premonition of your death at four in the morning. I shouted, Daddy, out the window in my dream. One bird flew by. Bird's neck was creepy, like the night bus driver's neck. Somehow, it was like yours, Daddy. Everyone gathered at the cathedral, lights a candle for each of the dead, and sings Assumption of Mary. Today is National Liberation Day in Korea. Like water leaking from the ceiling, cold birds one by one. Daddy, you're a tiny coat the size of my palm. You're wearing a little overcoat like the ones newborns are dressed in. You endure the coldness of death like a tiny shrunken life. Daddy, when your delirium begins, the Korean War starts, starts up again. Daddy, you always crawl onto the battlefield carrying a shotgun. The blanket falls down from your bed, and Daddy, your cradle keeps flickering in the trenches of whichever side. Mummy's a nursing officer, and I'm a medic. We charge toward the screaming soldier. Mummy and I, Mummy and I kept asking you, Daddy, do you know who I am? Daddy, do you know who I am? Daddy, who has forgotten nouns and verbs, answered. Already, earlier, already, earlier, shouting only the adverbs again. Already, earlier, already, earlier. I leave the cathedral and pull a suitcase as noisy as an ambulance with my left hand, then my right, back and forth. What's inside my bag? Are you in there, Daddy? Tiny Daddy wrapped in white paper like a gift wrapped in North Pole. Daddy, when the little overcoat that brings you wherever flutters, the rippling landscape that has lost its owner and its weight follows me. After we are all dead, the world left only with adverbs enfolds me between already and earlier. I'm a 음, 음악이 없으면 걷지도 않아 레이스가 없으면 슬립을 입지 않아 때리면 피가 나는 드럼이 있어 맞으면서도 춤추면 춤추는 데를 떠나지 않아 무너진 바다에 무너진 배 무너진 밤 무너진 배는 떠나지 않아 교황 아버지 앞에선 촛불을 들고 춤을 춰야 해 물속에 비친 촛불은 흐르는 피를 닦지 않아 출렁출렁 고통밖에 없는 고통이 흐릿한 뼈를 일으키는 밤 이생의 모든 내 얼굴이 나를 불러도 돌아보지 않아 물속엔 메아리가 없어서 울지도 않아 내가 여기 없어도 나는 떠나지 않아 아직 않아 Not I don't walk without music. I don't wear a slip without lace. There's a drum that bleeds when you beat on it. It doesn't leave the dance hall despite the beating. Shattered sea with a shattered boat, shattered night, shattered boat doesn't depart. You must dance holding a candle in front of Holy Father. Candlelight reflected in the water doesn't wipe off the blood. Torment rippling with torment, raises a pale bone at night. I don't look back even when a lifetime of my faces call me. I don't cry inside the water because it's echoless. I don't depart even if I'm not here. Not yet. 최면의 여자 기분이 어떤가요? 외로워요. 미지근한 물 속에 떠다니고 있는 것 같은 기분이에요. 부피가 없는 사람이 된것 같아요. 무게도 없어요. 좋아요. 그 전으로 가보세요. 뭐가 보여요? 빛이요. 얼마든지 갈수 있어요. 빛이 나를 둘러싸고 있어요. 나는 눈부셔 더 이상 마주할 수 없어요. 채워주세요. 눈에는 안대를 아래엔 생리대를. Hypnosis, woman. 
How do you feel? Lonely. I feel as if I'm in lukewarm water. Feels like I've become massless, weightless. Feels good. Please return to the past. What do you see? Light. I can keep going inside it. The light surrounds me. It's so bright that I can't look at it anymore. Please put the sleep shades on my eyes and feminine napkins below. 당신은 보기만 하지만 말할 수 없습니다. 나는 질문하고 당신은 대답합니다. 당신은 답변의 세계에서만 살아갈 수 있습니다. 당신은 먹지만 내가 맛을 알려줍니다. 이 구두는 참 맛이 있군요. 이 구두를 먹으면 당신은 활달해집니다. 당신은 매 순간 먹고 싶습니다. 내 구두를 그 속의 발가락을. You can see, but you can't speak. I ask and you answer. You can only live in the world of answers. You eat, but I tell you what you're tasting. These shoes are delicious. When you eat the shoes, you become vivacious. You want to eat them every second, my shoes, even my toes. 침을 뱉어요. 꼭 잡아요. 복도를 빨리 걸어가요. 당신은 내가 다가가면 심장이 뛰어요. 내가 멀어지면 심장이 아파요. 나를 보면 웃어요. 아무나 보고 웃지 않아요. Spit, grab tight, walk quickly down the hallway. Your heart beats hard when I get near you. Your heart aches when I'm far away. You smile when you see me. You don't smile at just anyone. 오늘부터 왼쪽으로 기울어집니다. 다시는 당신의 몸을 오른쪽으로 펼수 없습니다. 가방이 왼쪽 땅에 질질 끌립니다. 식판의 밥이 왼쪽으로 쏟아집니다. 왼쪽 귀가 멍멍합니다. 당신의 아름다운 오른쪽은 나의 것입니다. From now on, your body will lean to the left. You can't stretch your body to the right. Your bag is dragged along on your left side. The food on the tray spills to the left. You've got a ringing in your left ear. Your beautiful right side is mine. 내가 텔레비전 하면 텔레비전이 체면을 겁니다. 내가 재봉틀 하면 재봉틀이 체면을 겁니다. 내가 달력하면 달력의 1일에서 31일까지가 체면을 겁니다. 일하면 두 손을 드는 겁니다. 오 하면 우도스를 벗는 겁니다. 6 하면 가랑이를 벌리는 겁니다. 이제 숫자는 명령입니다. 가방을 열면 안 됩니다. 다바, 당신 가방 속에 내 목소리가 있습니다. 눈물을 손등으로 닦으세요. 당신은 나를 대신하는 것들로 둘러싸여 있습니다. When I say TV, the TV hypnotizes you. When I say sewing machine, the sewing machine hypnotizes you. When I say calendar, the days from 1 to 31st hypnotize you. When I say 1, you raise both hands. When I say 5, you take off your clothes. When I say 6, you open your legs. Now the numbers are commands. You're not permitted to open your bag. My voice is inside your bag. Wipe your tears with your hand. You're surrounded by my replacements. 당신은 내 말을 중간에 끊을 수가 없습니다. 당신은 무한 궤도 위에 홀로 돌고 있는 1인 우주선입니다. 당신은 오직 나 휴스턴에게만 반응합니다. 당신은 이제 나 없이는 귀환할 수가 없습니다. 드디어 당신의 심장이 당신에게 체면을 걸지 않습니까? 당신의 심장이 당신 의지와는 상관없이 나에게 반응하는 것입니다. 한번 외쳐 보세요. 내 심장은 당신의 것. 내 심장은 당신의 것. You can't interrupt my speech. You are one person space shuttle circling above the infinite orbit. You can only respond to me or NASA. You can't return without me now. At last, your heart's hypnotizing you, isn't it? Your heart only responds to me regardless of your own will. Try shouting after me. My heart is yours. My heart is yours. 반복하라. 나는 당신의 소름, 당신의 오르가즘, 당신의 호주머니. Repeat. I'm your goosebumps. I'm your orgasm. I'm your pocket. 
당신은 지금 피곤합니다. 다리에 힘이 풀립니다. 눈을 뜨고 있기가 힘듭니다. 달빛이 당신을 재웁니다. 잠에 들었습니까? 좋습니다. 당신은 오늘 일을 잊습니다. 당신은 세번 두드리는 소리에 깨어날 겁니다. 깨어나면 나를 기억하지 못할 겁니다. 안대를 벗을 때 무언가 흙이 떠오를지도 모릅니다만. You're tired now. Your legs are relaxed. Your eyelids keep drooping. Moonlight puts you to sleep. Are you asleep? Good. You'll forget about today. You'll wake up after the third knock. When you awake, you won't remember me. As you take off your shades, you might have an inkling of something. 저녁 바람이 고요하다. 명령을 씻지 않는 바람은 바람이 아니다. 이 물맛 진짜 좋은데 말해주던 사람 어디 갔나. 명령을 받지 못한 나는 내가 아니다. 물맛이 물맛이다. 당신은 이제 발을 한 발짝 떼고 걸어 나갈 수 있습니다. 말해주지 않으니 나는 내가 아니다. 벽에 붙은 거울처럼 아무도 아니다. 이 최면을 거슬러 거슬러 올라가라 하던 목소리 나를 살다 사라진 목소리 단숨에 나를 그곳으로 데리고 가던 목소리 없는 나는 진짜 아니다. 아니라는 명령이 없으니 나는 아니조차 아니다. The night wind is quiet. The wind that doesn't carry a command is not a wind. Water tastes really great. Where did the person who told me, who told me this go? Without the commands, I'm not me. Water tastes like water. Since no one tells me, now you can take one small step and walk out. I'm not me. I'm nothing like the mirror on the wall, the voice that said, climb, climb up the hypnosis. The voice that lived inside me has vanished. I'm not real without the voice that took me to that place instantly. Without the no command, I'm not even no. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was such a wonderful pair of haunted readings. Um, thank you to Elizabeth Willis and Nancy Bowen and Kim Hae-soon and Don Miche. Um, thank you to New Directions and to Litmus. I hope that you'll be with us again for our next event with Jonathan Gonzalez and Alexander Wahalia next Thursday. Have a good night.